From the RBS Radio Network, I'm John Casson. We have a very special guest on the air today. It's an Air Force flight surgeon and primary care physician, Dr. Ron Rabitsky. Turned entrepreneur and global thought leader in digital media and precision medicine. He is an entrepreneur in residence. I didn't know what that meant. I just learned about that. He leads Elfin's whole, yes. whole person care, UX and technology innovation brain trust. Dr. Ron published, presented, and led industry and academic workshops around the world on technology, innovation, and practice. His academic appointments include Harvard, University of Massachusetts, and Emory. So very well-qualified physician, and we're going to talk some AI today and some really interesting things you're doing. Dr. Ron, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you guys for having me. May I add to the list of uh, academia uh, service in Rwanda? Now it's called One University of Rwanda. It used to be uh, Kigali Institute of Technology, KIST, like MIT, and Kigali Health Institute. I think they deserve a role. It's an emerging, it's a fantastic, phenomenal emerging country, and in digital health, by the way. That's great to hear. And you're originally from Israel, too, right? Is that right? Correct. And you're living- raised. Dr. Ron, you, you have an obviously a very impressive list of credentials and a lot of things you're doing. Uh, and we discovered you just, you know, here uh, at, at, your, uh, at your Charlotte location, and was curious a little bit more about what you do. And when we learned about it, we were just kind of stunned, particularly what you're doing in regards to helping people to avoid falling. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, it's not me. Uh, if I kind of uh, stumble over and I use the, the I, please think about the we, all right? Because it's not, <laughs> no Maverick, like Top Gun, no Maverick can do it alone. You remember this is section, you know? He said, I and I, and this guy, the teammates say, we, yes, we. It's always we. I, I'm very serious about this. It's, it's, it's very deep. So, so we at Alphand, um, we figured out there's some technology that, that would enable the world to mitigate the fall of risk. While I would make up a number like, like 90% of the world, when they hear fall, they are still in the fall detection. Alfin goes beyond, and goes beyond is part of the mantra of the persona of Alfin. Always go beyond, because Alfin is a digital health innovator, global. And the idea is, and that is something that I bring from my two or three decades practice in user experience, we always ask why and so what, why and so what. So we are asking the world, uh, kind of, you know, it's important to respond to fall, but uh, very important, but so what if a technology can only allow you, enable you to detect the fall and respond to it? You don't want it to keep going. You want to prevent the fall. And preventing the fall is multifaceted kind of thing. It takes philosophy. It takes uh, strategy. It takes policies, procedures, working with stuff, and technology. So we are coming from the technology and understanding space. And, and uh, we are now offering uh, the world, uh, beginning with residential care, but it will go into the home base, like uh, on people on, on their own. Uh, we offer a roadmap. Think about the use case roadmap that begins with detecting faults and responding to them within a couple minutes, right? Optimizing the workflow. There's a lot of going on when somebody falls and nobody is around, but Alphine technology enables us to detect that. And while, as we optimize the, the workflow, so the staff will come to the rescue of the individual, take care of them, then still in the context, and in Air Force we call it ground effect, still in the context, document what happened not only in a streamlined way, okay, not just this, but beyond this, because Alfin's approach is uh, begins with, okay, so what does the system know at every point in time, right? So that's when the intelligence comes in. And intelligence does not require AI per se. We are taking it to the AI machine learning, of course, right? But the notion is the system by that point, by that time, knows so much information about the individual who failed about the, the staff, about the circumstances. So documentation suddenly becomes an awesome, exciting experience. Nobody likes to do the documentation, but Alfin does it like no other. 
So right now, hospitals use like a traditional system, or I guess it's modern by modern standards, like Epic or something, where they where a nurse or a doctor will put in information and data in, data out, and that's where they get it. How is yours different? Uh, beginning with the user experience. It starts and ends in the user experience. So, for example, if someone were to fall, what 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 detects that? Uh, there is a there is a technology contactless. There's so many different ways to do it, right? But Alfin adopted contactless. It, it, it's it's uh, think about it like a, a radar technology. It is kind of a radar technology, um, and it detects motion. This is why Alfin is motion intelligence, motion sensing intelligence not just for detection. Mm -hmm. So it detects the motion and motion patterns and it can, this is where there is AI and machine learning at the edge, we call it edge computing in the center, right? That says, whoops, there's a pattern of mo motion that is most likely, very high credibility, most likely a fall occurred. And once this edge computing technology is sensor in the room, senses that, it immediately sends a signal to the cloud, to our cloud. And we take the signal, interpret that, and, and the value-added software uh, that, that we put on top of this, uh, we then interact, we alert the individuals who are assigned to watch for, to be vigilant for, for this kind of alerts and accountable for reporting, for uh, dashing to the room and, and responding to that. that that's how we do it. So when you say dashing to the room, so I imagine that means for the most part, these people are, they have a chronic condition that would result in them potentially falling like a nursing home or an assisted living facility or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And, and this is where the, the, the risk mitigation comes to play. Um, in our understanding of the worldwide market research that, that uh, we, we've done so many different ways and channels, understanding is that most predictions are based on the very narrow scope of what's a pattern of falls over time. But Alfin comes in with a whole person care platform, with a notion that the system knows so much about the person, such as, as you said, chronic conditions. Okay. So if somebody has epilepsy or seizures, right, and usually this individual get medications that, that interfere with their, their brain, and their controls. So they're more prone to falls, right? But just to close the loop on, on, on where we started, this is part of the conversation, like uh, how Alfin is different uh, from the epics of the world. Uh, epics uh, of the world, uh, they do phenomenal job, you know, in, in capturing a lot, a lot, a lot of information, but the US user experience is pretty bad, actually. We see more and more reported uh, physicians, not only physicians, clinicians, are burned out and some of them leave the profession and they attribute that in part to electronic medical records of sorts. Okay, so the, so often comes in with beginning with the user experience design, user centered design, understanding the user, understanding the data, and and delivering exceptional experience to the user. And documentation is one of the most more burdensome interactions for the between the user and the system. How does it automatically document? So I know, for instance, with Epic, you know, the doctor puts it in. My wife's a nurse as well, critical care nurse, and she, she was, and, yeah. and you're right. When when Epic first came out, she just said, "I, I'm, I'm gonna quit. <laughs> this is terrible." And I couldn't believe she said that. She'd been a nurse for thirty years, but eventually she got used to it and she embraced it and, or at least tolerated it. And doctors do as well. But they put everything in. You know, they 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 can see your conditions and they enter it in. How is your company different in terms of it? How does it do it by itself? How does it know what I had for lunch and and those kind of things. Uh, um, and, and, and actually, you actually gave us the platform for the conversation by automation. Alfin does not automate. Alfin provides intelligent solution. For me, automation is something that uh, if you come in and you say, hey, I automate this, so probably you created efficiencies. So we are now in the tactical problem solving. Do the same thing faster, right? But we need to do something else because healthcare is very different than, than many other industries, markets, professions. Uh, the presumption of uncertainty is inherent. And, and, and uh, 
to be a good clinician, I practiced medicine for 10 years, right? So in my view, uh, to be a good, passionate, compassionate clinician is to embrace uncertainty early on in your medical school, okay? So with that, um, we, we bring all these concepts, on, all this realization to the team uh, at Alfin, and with, we interact, we explore together in, in, in the brain trust. We have the notion of cycles, discover, ideate, innovate. Okay, small cycles. Um, and, and through that, we try to come up with intelligent, meaning contextually intelligent, solutions to the interaction between the person and and the, the system and i don't want to make it uh a conversation about uh, uh what epic is good at and what epic is bad at. everybody solves a problem mm -hmm. but we we address a problem that for too long was unattended okay a problem that um, I speak for myself. Um, uh, in my view, working around the world, uh, as you mentioned, I worked on the ground in 26 countries in addition to the US. On the ground, not Zoom on email, just on the ground. Right? So uh, the notion is that the common denominator of IT system or digital health system in the healthcare um, appear to be driven by technologists, driven by engineers driven by uh teams that says hey from an engineer say, isn't it cool to do this isn't anything it is cool if you'll have a technology conference yeah this is very cool but how does it work for the user it's a forget the last mile how does alvin work for the user tell me how that works yeah uh <laughs> we have this metaphor uh that uh the we the, the the engineer part of of, of uh, the company the, we, we encourage ourselves to stand up from where we are, go through the door, leave the computer science department, leave the R and D uh, the engineering department, cross the street, cross the street to where the buyers are and where the users are, turn around and look at ourselves. That's a user centered design. This is where we begin. Understanding who is the user, understanding what problems the users want to solve. And, and our take is the world is not just about solving problems. The world is also the entrepreneurship. It's also about creating new opportunities, right? So generating something new, innovative. And once we, we understand that, sometimes we find ourselves going to the market and say, have you thought about that? Not from the technology shiny object, but from the value. Um, and then uh, from that, we go deep into understanding the data. Understanding the data. Another flaw that, in my view, that I see in, in a lot of IT systems is they start with the engineering idea, they throw in some wireframing, they go into screen design and destroy the developers to do that. And developers try to do the best job they can because that's what they asked to do. But what was missing from this story? Understanding the user. How do you How have such a, I see why you have such a keen understanding with all the, all the research you've done and the places you've taught and worked and in collaboration you've done, but from the perspective of somebody who is, who is not as skilled, which is probably everyone as you are, what, what, what is it that, you know, how, how do you get sort of to the, I don't want to say lower, but to, to get to a level that's easily understandable and let's just call it an elevator pitch for lack of a better word, yeah. where you can, you can sum up, this is what it, this is what it does. This is why it's going to help you and your patients. And this is what the, you know, overall long-term benefits are. Uh, we start with the value, what, what you're trying to solve before, before how, how it works and what it does. We start with the value proposition with problem solution, right? And we demonstrate the difference. We take them through a user journey. We okay. demonstrate to them that our, how the big ideas translate to a real situation they can interact with. And, and I learned uh, at a certain point, <laughs> physicians are lifelong learners and I, and I enjoy, I'm learning every day, every day. Right? So uh, I learned after a while doing this, um, that the test, and now we present that to the team at every project. Our goal is 
that by the time we are done with the demonstration of the solution, by then or sometime it happens even before we are done, right? The audience would burst in. And, and, and think about it. By that time, we, were, we have done our elevator pitch. We, we, we demonstrate to them that we understand the problem, we understand the market, we understand them, and this is how we do it differently. And then we go to, this is how it's going to work for you, the experience. So by that time, if we do our job right, somebody will stand up on the audience and they will ignore us and they'll turn to the colleagues and peers and say, wow, you got to have it. Don, it happened to me time and again, time and again. So when, when the team really focuses on that, that this is our utmost goal, right? good things happen. And, 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 and we make a difference. We change people's lives, not only the staff, the users, but we, we make an indent on the path to reduce or eliminate the burden of disease, period. That's why we're here for. What phase are you in now? Are you beta phase or is it actively being rolled out or whereabouts is it? Um, we no longer use, these are, um, no, I'm into it, so, <laughs> we're, we're not using alpha and beta anymore. The alpha and beta um, concepts were very, very useful maybe 20 more years ago at the state of technology that, that was there, technology developed so quickly there. So um, instead of that, we are using a very, very practical, very pragmatic framework that drives everything. That we, we step back and ask ourselves, where are we? Are we in a go-to product? And go-to product is, we, we have great ideas when we do have great ideas. <laughs> where are we from great idea to create a product? And when we have a product, then we are in a go-to market. And at a certain point, if we do the job right, we are going to the third phase, go to scale. And, and, and this, is, this is called the, the, the uh, traversing the traction gap. We adopted that uh, from Wildcat, uh, Wildcat Ventures. Okay? And I found it very, very practical. So the transition from go-to product to go-to market we refer to that as IPR, initial product release. Mm -hmm. It's not MVP. So many, too many people confuse MVP, right? IPR is when we believe we got most of this right working with early adopters. We got most of it right. Now we're ready to implement this. And the physician in me sometimes, and I was also CIO, Sometimes I play on, 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 I play on the world saying, no, 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 we don't implement, we implant. Implant. Because think about it, when, when we put a new system to an organization, to an enterprise, think about this as a living, breathing organization like human being or that we do an implant. Mm -hmm. We cannot stop the organization for a week and then tell it to come back. We have another. We're doing it on the fly, right? Dr. So Ron, IPR, yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you how many implants have you done and, and what kind of feedback are you getting? Uh, uh, we are in the, in the midst of the first implant, initial product release. We just started. Okay, good. Things okay. are happening pretty quickly. We just uh, initial product release with, with an, amazing, uh, <laughs> an amazing client. Uh, I'm not sure I'm at the liberty to disclose that, but I would say... They're amazing organization, beginning with the mission they have, the, the mission to humanity they have, um, the personalities and personas on the team, which is I learned the make or break, okay? Mm -hmm. um, innovative, daring, uh, um, and they are your neighbors. I will not go beyond that. How long have they been using you for? Uh, we, we are now putting that in production. We're, gotcha. Right now, we're putting in production. Okay. But we, we did that uh, intensively with them um, over the past several months. Well, this be something, if I have a loved one and I'm not taking them to a, you know, a, a high-level facility, I've just taken them to my local nursing facility around the corner. Okay. Um, yep. And I go in there and I meet the pe the staff and the and the nursing director, the director of the facility, and I say, "Tell me, tell me why this is a 
this is a place I can feel comfortable leaving my loved one who has these issues with falls and such. Um, is this something yeah. that can be explained to me, the guy who has no knowledge of medicine or maybe not even a lot of knowledge of falls other than what I just recently learned that, that can be explained in such a way that's going to give me a sense of relief almost to the stage where if I, if I visited a, a different nursing facility that didn't have this particular product, I would not even consider yeah. that. <laughs> Don't it's creepy because it's almost like you read from our playbook. <laughs> Because this is one of the things that, that we emphasize to begin with. Because, step back, whole person care is about the person at the center. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it is your mom uh, that uh, you are now transforming, transitioning her to, to um, nursing uh, care, uh, residential care. So the one thing we believe, we learn, one thing that is on your mind is your peaceful mind. Yep, exactly right. So, so in addition, and this is how we, we're relatively selective right now, okay? We try to align ourselves with organizations like the one we're implementing right now, who we think are really passionate. We heard so many bad things about nursing homes. Right? So we try to be very, very selective. Okay, to align ourselves with those who are very passionate, compassionate about the individuals they uh, care for. And by the way, in this environment, they don't think about patients, human beings, so individuals, because even when they have chronic diseases, they are not sick all day long, all the time. If they were, they would be in ICU, not in nursing homes. So mm -hmm. these are individuals that sometimes they have some medical problems. And you want to have peace of mind about mom, right? And you get peace of mind because you get the notion that the team that uh, you, you, you ask them to take our uh, own responsibility for, for the well-being of your mom is this kind of people, right? So then comes the Alphind solution, the, 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 in this case, motion sensing intelligence solution and, and expanding to a whole person care to do predictive analytics in a way that nobody else is doing today for the well-being of your mom to anticipate, not to be reactive. Healthcare, most of healthcare around the world is still in reactive yeah. mode. So we are going beyond that. I guess they call it practice for a reason because you never quite get it down perfect because you're always, technology is changing, knowledge is changing, uh, culture yes. and what's acceptable. Uh, what was acceptable, the way people died and how they died 20, 30 years ago is certainly a lot different yeah. than today. Nursing homes and assisted living facilities have a reputation for low pay, high turnover, short staff, um, uh, you know, demanding patient advocates, family members. Uh, and then somewhere in the course of all that malaise of, of just crap that people have to deal with there, how do the... <laughs> I'm just, you know, being candid and, and, and you know, when, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And when you come you're in right. and when you come on, when you come in, whether you're the director of a nursing home or you're or a patient or a family member, I think, is this something that's going to be difficult for them to learn and master or to have to send people to some kind of a training school or is it, is it kind of common sense like a security camera? Um, common sense and I like security camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll take care of the, the camera out. Uh, as I mentioned, the radar it is non-intrusive, non-intrusive, and and the privacy is maintained. Okay, it doesn't give you a picture of the person of, of, of the individual. Now, you are the chief nurse, um, uh, chief medical do uh, officer, uh, chief executive officer. You do have you do have a huge challenge on your hand. And that is, <laughs> sometimes it's more recruitment, sometimes more retention, and sometimes it's both, right? Of staff, shoulders of staff. Our thesis, our go-to-market thesis is that if, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a potential staff, I don't work for your organization, but I read, I learn through social media and other, other channels, families, friends, community, that here there's an organization, uh, a nursing home, let's pick on nursing home, because so many different types in, in long-term care. Nursing home, that's not only known for them being so compassionate, 
okay? And then they have reputation for that, but they are innovators. They are innovators of healthcare practices, support practices, and they're also they're catching up with the digital health innovation that happens around the world. Guess what? I would rather inquire if you have an open position as opposed to me going to a nursing home that's, that tr- still tries to squeeze every penny out of the system and uh, continue to add more and more bonuses to the executives. It's a, it's a personal choice, right? So this is where Alfin comes in because back to the experience, the experience of stuff. And we talked about the notions of, of the, the common EMR that cause burden to clinicians, and we are taking care of this burden through this inten- contextually intelligent anticipatory design of everything we do. Mm-hmm. Could, could an argument be made that having your product in my nursing home could potentially uh, mitigate, and I'm not saying it does for sure, we don't know, I guess, until it happens, yeah. but it could mitigate liability, could mitigate uh, potential for, for future lawsuits could validate, uh, facts that are otherwise, uh, un difficult to uh, ascertain, for example, the time someone fell or, or, uh, or how long they've been laying there by themselves or just all the things that, you know, patients and their families worry about and doctors, I'm sure too. And, and obviously healthcare facilities, would that be a nice tool, almost like a validator to, uh, to, uh, to basically give you a, a play-by-play of everything that happened at every moment. So if something ever were to make it into a courtroom or, or, or even start that process, it would be really easy to, to verify factually what happened, when it happened, and what the reaction was. And if that is the case, couldn't that also work in reverse? So if, I'm, if I drop off my loved one who's ailing and in bad health, obviously I'm in a pretty emotional state myself, and I find out next yeah. week that he died and he's got a big bruise on his eye, you know, I, I, it might be, it might be, um, it might be a human nature thing to say it's because of the darn healthcare facility. I should never have gone there. But then they see your product, and then the validators that you have to show on a play by play of exactly what happened would actually maybe give me a little bit more peace if it was done properly. Is that correct? And beyond, and beyond. Did I say that Alfin goes beyond? I think I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and beyond here as well. Okay, seriously speaking, because. Our interaction with our clients begins with, as I mentioned before, what's your problem? What's your, what's your philosophy? What's your individual care philosophy? What are your strategies? What are your policies? So as we go deeper into the discovery part of discover, ideate, innovate with this organization, we figure out what is their policies. Okay. So the system has to express, embed, implement, follow the policy of the organization, and then the play-by-play. What I'm trying to do, Don, is, yeah, the tactical, the operational, the transactional things are important. But sometimes we, we, we fail to see the bigger picture, the strategic picture. So for Alfin, we take, it's like a yin and yang, if you want to think about it. We approach it from these two aspects. Well, you certainly have a reputation for seeing the big picture and and then refining it so that the small measures, I guess, majoring in minor things, you know, making a small yes. change. Oh, yeah. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, a new car. My wife just bought a new, just a regular car, but it's a new car. And it has the... Uh, you know, the safety features that I didn't even know existed. Like she moves out of her lane and it te- corrects you. You take your eye off the road and it corrects you. And, you know, after driving her car for a while and then getting back into my car, which isn't really that old, but it's, but it doesn't have any of those features. I feel like I'm driving yeah. a dinosaur and I realize well, how much safer her car is, not just for her, but all the people around her. And, and I can tell you that if I went to buy a new car tomorrow, I would insist that it has all of those features because they're that important to me and my family and the people that, that I'm that are on the road with me. Is your would you think your the future of your product is similar in the sense that once a nursing home or two has that and people know it's out there and available and it's going to make them safer, it's going to make them feel more comfortable, it's going to make the nursing facility feel more comfortable. That pretty much it's going to be something. I'm sure that's what you hope it's going to happen. It's going to be in demand right. to the point where they wouldn't do anything else. Is that a correct assessment? Uh, Almost, 
and 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 the the the, the missing piece is again uh, sometimes people think it it's that we just play semantics we are done because for for us words matter we don't take it lightly right and we have gone through a very intriguing transformation from thinking about technology as a collection as a bag of features and functions to experiences so we so what we bring in we bring to our clients and the individuals they they serve and the families and the mentors experiences yes indeed for experiences you have to have a set of features but uh we up level that we go beyond to the experiences and and i think that yeah uh when i drive um, my car and 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 the sensor senses that i'm going too fast toward the, the car ahead of me and i get the three dots the three red dot and beep 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 yeah. it's a feature but it invokes some activities some experiences so we try to stay to always start the conversation and remind ourselves of what the total experience is. otherwise yeah we totally with you and i think that equivalent that it is equivalent to to what we do yeah and and, and i want to go back to the notification god forbid you know losing a loved loved one but even and, and, and past that uh to learn about it just a week later uh, so we also, uh, Alfin also emphasizes the omni-channel thing, All right? So we always ask ourselves what channels we may utilize at any point in the workflow, in the user journey, in the events, okay? So God forbid somebody, let's say Cynthia fell, Cynthia fictitious name, you know? Cynthia Burns, 30 years old, autism, a residential autism facility and it's one or two a.m. and she fell right? based on policy the system intelligence in that first of all the system knows that Cynthia fell because we take that right the system knows um, what is the reason of the fall what happened was she injured if she was injured where she was injured because of the incident report I talked about before at that point based on on intelligence and rules and logic the system that's where automation may come in i'll give it i'll give that to you the system automatically invokes another intelligent process that says so who needs to be informed oh her dad the guarantor uh, do we know his name yeah of course we know do we know his phone number yes of course we know do we know his preferences that when cynthia falls uh, god forbid where how he wants to be notified and yes in his preference he said if it is between uh uh 9 p.m to 7 a.m please send me text otherwise call me so there are there are intelligent technologies nowadays that that allow us enable us to send this kind of rule to them and say send a message so nobody has to dial the number and find the number and I give a call and there's no no it's all intelligently automated i'll give that to you all well mid, middle of the road it sounds intelligently like, automated it sounds like you did a really good job your team did a really good job striking the balance of personal care and automation yeah. and i think that's sometimes oh, yeah. so difficult i know when i call my doctor just to get a prescription refilled or something. And I get some girl at the front desk, if I can get anybody on the phone at all, and it's not an automated machine. And you know, it's, it's, it's medical care. It's personal. And in, in my case, it's a medication that if I don't take it, I, I die. And so, and so a, re, a renewal prescription should be, should be personal. Sometimes it is more often than not, it's automated. It's a, it's a lifetime you know routine prescription, but you know, it sounds like, it sounds like that your, your product is designed to help, professionals be more professional more consistent yes. and more communicative than they had been prior to using that would that be a good summary yes and thank you so much don and 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 this this is what thank you uh this is one thing that clinicians protest for several years now they protested the burden of electronic health, health record takes them away from what they dedicated their lives to 
Mm-hmm. Becoming a physician is, is a very difficult thing, right? Seven year medical school, uh, three to five to seven years, depending on specialty residency, then fellowship, uh, night shifts. You're away from home, you're away from family, you dedicate your life to the well being of others. And here comes technology, it takes you away. Right? So that's exactly it. So thank you for, 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 for mentioning that. If someone is interested, if they're listening to this podcast right now and they say, God, I would love to learn more about this for my facility, or maybe I, maybe even more accurately, I have a loved one who's in a facility or about to go into a facility and I want that facility to know about it. What should they do? Are yeah. you taking, is there some way they can contact or are you right now reaching out to them? Uh, yeah. Um, first of all, we have online presence. Okay. The, the Alfin.com. And it's a global company, so we're not just limited to uh, North Carolina or the U.S. Right? So it's a global uh, operation anywhere in the world. Uh, anyone can go to Alfin.com and, and learn about what we're talking about. And, and once they there's a contact them. And once they learn, there's some contact information from there to, to, to reach yeah, out. contact information. And um, I suggest uh, to people also uh, go on LinkedIn and and follow um, follow Alfin uh, page so you'll get notified because we, we try to only channel again. We try to get the message out. Mm-hmm. So so you, you'll get all the feeds in, in, in near real time. Sounds Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Dr. Ron Rabitsky medical doctor and entrepreneur in residence for Alfind. And if you go online, it's A-L-P-H-I-N-D. I want to thank you for joining us this morning and sharing this with us. It sounds like we are in for a great future and I'm glad I'm not super yeah. old yet because maybe by the time I get to a, a assisted living facility that it'll be a pretty standard practice to have your product in my facility. So thank you. We hope so too. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Ron. Thanks for joining us on the RBH Radio Network. I'm John Casson. Talk to you soon.